don't be confused, Melanie, this is my real name, so uh, that's my real name. Um, when Vali asked me to talk about the proposal and to talk about the differences between the proposal I handed in for the course and the proposal I actually submitted to the committee, um, I thought it's um, the best idea if I give you a presentation that's a bit more practice oriented, like more like a hands-on approach. Like I would like to give you a little bit insight into issues I had, so you can maybe avoid them and I'll try to um, yeah give you a presentation on topics I wish I had had ahead. Well, you know what I mean. Um, <laughs> before I started doing my proposal. So <clears throat> I'm going to cover, as I said, and try to do it a bit more practical because um, research method is quite a theory-based course anyway, so you know all, all the theories from the books and from the course. Um, I'm going, going to cover the process of writing the proposal and researching the topic and the process of actually designing the research a little bit and <clears throat> the research question and how my research question um, changed from the level A to the level 9 course, or proposal. I'm going to talk a little bit uh, about my own data collection method and issues I experienced and why I changed it in the end a little bit. And I'm going to talk about focus groups because that was my data collection method, so that's basically all I can talk about today because that's all I, I know from my research. Okay. Um, steps to take to write your, process, uh, to, to your proposal. Um, as Valya said before, you have, you have your topic you want to, uh, you're interested in, and make sure within, whenever you choose your topic, make sure you're really interested in it. In, like, you have, you like your topic, and Natasha, for example, had crisis commutation and she did a really good job in doing doing her uh, writing her thesis but she always complained that she had to she was confronted with like negative issues all the time she had like a negative touch with her research all the time and she complained that she doesn't want to do it anymore because um, she found it hard to find people who actually want to talk to her and she was a little bit nervous to um, yeah, to have that negative thing in the back of your head for almost a year, and you can be a really long time, so make sure you choose a topic you really like and you're interested in, like your personal interest in, so it keeps you going throughout like the whole process, like a year can be pretty long if you don't like the topic. And um, narrow it down, as Vanya said, as you can see. Um, so it's not too broad, but I think we'll probably cover that anyway. The literature review, um, I'm not going to talk too much about it because it's probably not your first semester anyway, so you all know what a literature review is. It's good to, it's helpful for your proposal to see what's already done on the topic, as you might know, and to identify gaps. That's basically what it's for. So you can see what other people did already on that topic and identify gaps so that you not just duplicate or replicate what's done already, but you um, can build on these gaps and say, hey, this and that might not be researched yet or there are some um, differing opinions in the literature and you can build on it, you can use it and build your own research on these gaps. Um, otherwise your researcher or your supervisor might come up with the so what question, which I hear all the time basically. <laughs> so like um, if you just look at other studies and say, I want to do this. Why would you do the same study? Make sure you do something that's a little bit different or that adds value in some kind of way, but not just do what other people did, because otherwise you end up and just do the same study other people did already. So make sure you find like a little bit something interesting or a little bit different from what other people did before. Um, the literature review is also good to not only look at your topic, but also on your research design. Like you can, if you have an idea what you want to do, you can check other studies, or like you can check how other scholars um, did their research, how they designed the whole research process, how they collected their data, how they um, analyzed their data, what kind of data they actually collected. Like all these things, you can um, cover in the literature review as well, 
and helps you to make sure you're on the right track. Um, yes. The methodology, like the whole research design part of your research, the methodology, like the, the methodology logical approach, like qualitative, quantitative, mixed, and the method, how you want to collect your data, and uh, the research questions are quite interconnected. So make sure, I actually, yeah, have a nice little um, figure to illustrate the process. I came up with it, so <laughs> it might not be perfect, but I thought it might be helpful for you to um, understand the whole process of actually doing research because that was what I struggled with like a bit because you know you read all that stuff in the books and you hear it, like the theory but for me personally it was a bit hard to understand how it actually works so you know came up with a little figure so before you start like after you decided on your topic you have to decide what do I actually want to find out what do I actually want to research what is it uh, I am interested in and what is it um, that can add value in the end. Yeah. So. And then what kind of data do I need to answer my research question? Or what kind of data do I actually want to co um, collect? Mm. What kind of data means um, what is it actually you're looking at? Like I, for example, did um, totally like a purely qualitative approach and I was interested in thoughts and perceptions of um, individuals and how these thoughts are influenced by the culture. So I was actually not really into the individual, more like how culture influences people's perceptions. So that was the data I was after. So um, yeah, make sure you know what you actually want to research and what kind of data you want to collect. And then um, how can you collect the data? You have, that's why the literature review can help you, or what the literature review can help you with to look at other studies and see if you know what you want to call, like what kind of data you want to collect, look how other people did it, and um, you don't have to do it in the same way, but it can help you to um, decide what you want to do, or you can combine different approaches and see, okay, they did it like this, and they did it like that, and you can, can combine them, or you build on them, and you use like a similar approach or something like that. So, um, yeah. And then, how do you want to analyze the data? Like um, qualitative data, for example, is you can end up having like massive amount of data, and you have to reduce it. But somehow, you make sure before you start that you know what you want to do and how you want to do it. Um, I think for quantitative research, we have someone at, for qualitative probably as well. But I know for sure that we have someone at Tupuna Aku. If you have any questions, they're always really good at when they're quite often actually. So they can help you with, um, with the writing process, but also with like analyzing quantitative data and your statistics and stuff. And you like end up with like heaps of numbers and you don't really know what it actually means. They can help you. And yeah, if you can answer all these four questions, then you're basically on your way, I would say. Um, you can ref refine your research question at any stage of the process. It's not that you have, once the research question is set, you have to stick to it. When you go along, you you basically redo the process every now and then, and you might come up with like a slightly different topic, or you might come up with, I don't know, a different idea. It's like the research question can be refined or can like be rewritten at any stage of the process, so it's not that you have to stick to it till the end. I, for example, uh, I just changed it from level eight to level nine, but I stick to it till the end. But what I changed from the proposal I handed in to the actual thesis were my sub-questions. I changed them in the end, because I'm, yeah, that was just what I did. And so if you can answer one, two, three, four, for yourself, you, um, what I thought was really um, important for me, was or what I struggled with when I went from level eight from the proposal I handed in for the course to level nine, the proposal I actually handed in was um, feasibility. I don't know how to pronounce it actually. Feasibility. 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 Thank you. Um, of the whole process. Um, for me, it 
was I did my um, proposal for the course and I thought everything's good, I have a great I actually had um, intercultural um, communication and multicultural teams as well mm -hmm. for my um, level A proposal. And um, yeah, when I was actually had to write the proposal for um, the committee to for my thesis, I found myself um, confronted with reality <laughs> to put it in this way. And I was like, okay, so I have a great idea, I have a great topic, I know what I want to do, um, but for me the problem was how do I want to do it actually? For me it was that how can I actually collect the data I want to collect? And um, yeah, I think, um, oh, I, guess I think I'm going to talk about that in a minute. So the second part is a time frame. So if you know what you want to do, make sure you can actually do it within a given time of like, know one semester, one and a half semesters, because um, you have to come up with your research design process, you have to collect the data, you have to, to find um, people or companies or whatever you can do your research with, you have to be participants. Um, you have to write up the whole thing, you have to analyze the data, so make sure you have like a, um, a schedule, a time schedule before you start, and to make sure you kind of stick to it, because otherwise you run out of time pretty easily. And um, your resources you actually have as a student. For example, if you, um, what's the name, Birgit, for example, flew to Papua Papa oh, New Guinea. So um, you need obviously money to do this. And you need, um, um, I, for example, I did um, focus breaks and I needed a, a trans, um, like a little audio device to, trans um, to record it, like the recording. Um, that's like, you know, easy stuff. You can get it from our department, it's actually pretty cool. You can just get um, electronic devices from Loom. So whatever you need to audio tape or video tape anything, you can probably get it from Loom anyway. But if you want to do um, bigger stuff, like going somewhere else to, to collect your data, you obviously need someone to do this. research questions. The first one is um, my research question from the course, from the level 8 one basically. And that was how does openness and directness influence competent intercultural communication in multicultural team settings? And how can competent intercultural communication be achieved and maintained in multicultural teams? And the, I changed it to how does our directness in intercultural communication affect the perception of trust among individuals with different cultural profiles? So I basically went from openness and directness to openness only, and I went away from the multicultural teams to um, a different topic basically, trust, and um, how culture influences my participants' perception of trust or trustworthiness. And I did that because